Well, Larry Noble, thank you for joining us from Seattle at the World Vision headquarters. We're really excited to spend some time together. It's my pleasure to be here, Greg. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I am too. Uh, Larry is the National Director of Corporate Engagement for World Vision, and he's also a visiting professor at the Keller Graduate School of Management, spent a lot of time in the hotel industry. And uh, But Larry, I am so excited about this podcast because I have talked to scores of people about what we're doing with World Vision and singularly what you're doing at World Vision, and no one yet has said, I'm aware of that. So we're about to make a lot of people aware of something that's really exciting. Excellent. That's uh, We're trying to get that word out, Greg. So this is a great forum to do it. Yeah. So apparently about 90% of World Vision's operating expenses are used for things that everybody's aware of. Uh, children, families, communities, water, but there's a new way for companies to engage. And I think it's gonna be delightful for CEOs to hear about. It's called corporate engagement. Tell us about it. Well, corporate engagement has been around World Vision for many, many years. I joined, I joined World Vision about 16 years ago, um, coming from 30 years plus in the corporate sector. So, you know, putting myself, once I joined, putting myself back in the seat of the, the corporate executive and what, what was I looking for in an engagement with an international nonprofit like World Vision? We, together as a team, uh, basically came together and said, you know, our real role in this world, our, our role with World Vision and our role with our corporate donors is how do we engage corporate donors in a way that benefits their business um, and also allows us to continue to do the, the superb work that World Vision does in over 100 countries, including the United States. So out of that, we developed a business solutions platform um, where we come alongside companies of all sizes, all stripes, uh, basically all industry sectors to provide solutions to help them build their business, help them relieve their reverse logistics uh, concerns, you know, uh, overcrowding of warehouse space, downfall product, excess inventory, um, helping them build their brand among their stakeholders, their employees, their shareholders, their vendors, uh, the community at large. Um, so we, we developed this program just to do that, to come alongside corporations, understand and ascertain what their, what their issues are, what keeps them awake at night. And then in many, many cases, if not most cases, we can actually add value to that corporation by allowing them to come alongside World Vision to do the work that we do. Hmm, that's, that's cool. So let's put this into shoe leather for people who are listening. So I think that 99% of people who are listening to our voices right now think the way I could give to World Vision is write a check. Mm -hmm. And uh, I might write a check for $500 or $5,000 or $50,000, and I've helped. But that is the giver helping World Vision. But now you're actually saying World Vision would like to help the corporation or the giver. How can they do that? Uh, in a number of ways. So when, when you sit down with one of our, my representatives, um, that first interview, that first discussion is going to be more about you as your company, as, as a CEO. Um, again, what keeps you awake at night? What are the issues you're dealing with, you're facing on a daily basis? We are basically business to business salespeople. So my folks are purely in the mode of helping businesses grow. So once we have that interview, we take that information, we line that up with the type of work that World Vision does, and we can provide several options in most cases where a CEO can choose which way uh, they might want to engage, which, what can we do that will most benefit their company? Um, most often that starts with a product donation, um, we are a, a huge reverse logistics organization. We moved 160,000 plus pallets last year. 
Um, we shipped to, you know, we shipped over 400 containers worldwide. We shipped tens of thousands of pallets domestically to help our, our church partners and our domestic partners uh, to do their ministry. In that, we have a, a best-in-class worldwide supply chain that can literally move product from anywhere it is to anywhere in the world with no heartburn, with no concerns on the donor's part. We handle all of that. Uh, take that all off of their off their plate. So we pick up product in as far-flung places as Singapore, Sri Lanka, Spain. Uh, we picked up product in the United Kingdom, um, and we've shipped it literally everywhere in the world, from Southeast Asia to West Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, Latin America, and again, here domestically among our network of affiliate partners. Hmm. Well, uh, you don't have to reveal the source of the place that we were touring together one day, and I don't think we need to unless you want to, but we're touring in this very, very large, uh, probably 30,000 square foot warehouse, and we're passing uh, you know, bathroom vanities and bicycles and diapers and, uh, you know, radios and televisions. And this is an example of excess inventory, right? Correct. And or, or people had a return a policy that was whatever, and all their pallets of returns are going to World Vision. So then uh, tell us what happens when, let's pretend we make bicycles, and I have... 15 bicycles that were returned and I don't want to fix them. I give them to World Vision. What happens then? World Vision receives them into one of our several uh, distribution centers nationwide. Um, Bike Washington, just outside uh, Tacoma, is the one that you toured, Greg. Um, in those facilities, then we sort that product, we verify that it is still first quality. Um, in the case of bicycles, uh, we normally have partners that come alongside of us. So if the bicycle needs any kind of repair, we have people that repair those bicycles to top condition. Um, from there, then we use a pull strategy with our with our partners. So if the bicycles are going to go internationally, let's say they're going to go to Zambia, um, the NAS, our national office, our people on the ground in Zambia, will tell us the products they need in order to execute the programming that they've committed to for the communities they're working in. So those 15 bicycles would be requested by Zambia. They will then go on a container uh, as soon as we have enough product to fill a container and it will go on the water for about 45 days, uh, overland in Zambia's case about 10 days, arrive at our national office, at that point then our, our field personnel will take that product and they'll put it on uh, in pickup trucks, in box trucks. In some cases, they tie it onto the back of water buffalo, depending on how difficult it is uh, to get to the final destination. And we ship that product the last mile to the people who need it most. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, so if I'm a, 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 a a buyer, a creator, a manufacturer of a product, that's great. What if I run a hotel or what if oh. I create software or what if I'm a consultant? How can World Vision help me? Okay. We have, a, again, a number of different ways that we can come alongside. So again, if the, if the desire is to build the brand or to build brand equity among their stakeholders, one of the primary tools that the corporations use is cause-related marketing. Um, so we will come alongside them with a program that they can promote to their customers, their vendors, their stakeholders, by which a percentage of those sales will go to the work that World Vision does. In return for that, we provide reporting on the impact of those donations, which then the corporation generally turns around and, and communicates to those stakeholders. So in one case, we've got a, a major national retailer, thousands of employees, uh, well-known big box store. Uh, we do a quarterly newsletter for them, which is purely for their employees and their, and their other stakeholders. So that they're building that, uh, that employee loyalty. The, the employees today, uh, as every CEO is aware, our employees are looking for connection. They're looking for not just working for a corporation that makes money, 
the corporation that's making a difference. So we can provide that type of data, that type of story uh, that will uh, facilitate that for the corporation. That's mm -hmm. one way. Um, we also work in the employee engagement arena. So we have a program where a corporation, if they want to involve their employees, and, and right now, everybody coming back to work after uh, the last couple of years, one of the primary concerns we're running into is how do we re-engage our employees? How do we convince them that, that coming back collegially in a corporate office, in a warehouse, in a headquarters uh, is beneficial and then make them comfortable and, and basically bring them back to the fold. So we have a program that uh, facilitates kit builds for those employees. So the corporation invests in a product. It could be school backpacks for domestic distribution. It could be school promise packs for international distribution. It can be women's hope kits that generally serve women's shelters and halfway houses. Uh, the corporation invests in that. We ship the product to the site of their designation. Uh, we show them how to conduct the kit build. If it's a larger kit build, one of my people will be there to help facilitate it and tell the story. Uh, but it gives the employees a chance to do a hands-on activity uh, that is going to benefit those who are underserved. The most powerful part of that whole process, though, is at the very end, after they've assembled a kit, uh, they go to a table where we have note cards available, and they will write a personal note to the individual who's going to be receiving that product. And in my experience with World Vision, I've, I've traveled the world, I've traveled uh, First Nations reservations here in the United States, what I find is after that product is long gone, after it's been consumed, after it's been used, that note is still generally pinned to a wall. Um, it, is, it is cherished by the people who receive the product. So it, it gives those employees a chance to see that their company is, is not only in it for, for profit, but in it for you know, the general good. Sweet. Well, we at Convene are very excited about the initial discussions we're having to do uh, this together, where we serve about 50,000 employees uh, from coast to coast, and we are excited about talking about how we can do that together. But in the meantime, yeah. I just want to say that uh, there was a time about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago that I had about 20 Convene uh, CEOs uh, go to Cuba with me. And we all brought a bicycle to Cuba. And I just want to say that was very complicated and very hard. And donating excess product inventory to you to send to Cuba or to you to send to Africa or to you to send to India sounds much easier. Yeah, uh, that is that is what we do. I won't say it's easy, um, but I say that because I don't have to do that work. We have a a full-blown, very robust supply chain that, that takes care of all of that for us. That's really our one of our primary one of our primary points of differentiation is that we we do what we say and we say what we do. Um, so when we say we're going to pick that product up and it's going to go to whatever country it's going to go to or whatever city in the United States, it's going to go there. And it will it will get there with little to no hassle on the donor's part. And then we'll let you know when it when it arrives. There you go. And I know somebody out there is saying, "Do I get a tax receipt for some of this?" Can you talk to that? Absolutely. Um, yes, we are a qualified five hundred one c three. So any donation, be it product, be it cash, is fully deductible by a by a corporation. Um, we also are in compliance with the one seventy e three IRS code which means in terms of product, not only can you take 100% of your value of that product, but in some cases you can take up to double that value under the 170E3 uh, designation. And we do that because we don't serve directly, we serve through partners, either our international offices or our domestic partners. Mm. Um, yeah, go ahead. So if somebody out there is saying, I'm intrigued, I have this corner of my warehouse that has 25 pallets of stuff, whatever it might be, um, what should they do? Give us a call. Um, 
if you got, and I know at the, at the end of this podcast, you're going to talk about our website, but anybody can go to worldvision.org, worldvision.org backslash corporate. That will take you to our corporate landing site. And that gives you the, the myriad ways that corporations are working with us, including now a newly launched, a gifts in kind, a product donation calculator. So you can actually go online, use the calculator, um, input the, the data that you have, the value of the product, your current corporate tax rate, um, you know, logistics charges, all of that. And it will give you options and, and it will show you the value of donation versus the value of liquidation or the value of disposal. Um, and that's Very becoming cool. more and more important, more and more critical as disposal costs are climbing every year. Um, yeah. We're finding companies find it much more cost effective to donate than to even uh, throw things into the landfill. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, uh, as we keep this as simple as possible, I know somebody out there is thinking I have two trucks and they've reached 100,000 miles and I put them on Craigslist and I can't sell them. Can they call you and you'll pick them up? They can call us and we will refer them to an agency that we work with that actually disposes of that type of real property. Um, so they will get a full tax deduction for the value of that of that vehicle and World Vision will receive the proceeds and we will put it to, to good use. There As you, you said earlier, Greg, you know, we we operate on 10% or less overhead every year. Um, 90% plus of everything we raise goes directly to field support, goes directly to the people who need the need the resources. So we're very yeah. proud of that, but it's also a benefit to the corporation to know that, that that's the fact. Yeah. Uh, so we touched on this, but we didn't really talk about it in this particular way that I'd like to talk about it, which is, let's say you do a kit build day and you have, you know, 10, 20, or 200 employees who are working all together in this kind of assembly line, creating women's health kits or kits for children in another country or whatever the case may be. It's not just that they're kind of doing this thing. It's that they're doing this thing for something that now let's go a different angle everybody has heard of, which is World Vision. Mm -hmm. So if you could announce to your employee team, we're going to do something for World Vision together today that will help people, it's going to take whatever, an hour, two hours, 10 minutes, whatever. And do you have some stories of what's happened with companies that have done this? Um, yes, absolutely. So uh, a few years back, we were, we were doing... Uh, prior to the pandemic, we were doing anywhere from 100 to 200,000 of these kits per year. Wow. Among, you know, two to three to 400 events per year. Um, so we've got lots of stories in that. Uh, you know, I've, I've done kit builds with companies as large as Fortune 5 companies, and we've done kit builds with startup companies. What they have all found, what, what they come back, most of our donors that utilize the kit build will come back. They will do it again. I think that's the best testament to the value of the, of the event. But what they find is their, their teams come together more effectively. Um, they define a more common purpose for the corporation. Um, you know, there are some fun times too. I, I was working with a large financial services company. We did 13 events in one day uh, scattered throughout the country. And in every case, what happened was they held their sales team in abeyance until the end. So they'd run the finance team, the operations team, the other teams through the kit build. And then they'd end up with probably 30% of the kits that needed to can still remain to be built. They'd bring in the sales teams and the sales teams would take it as a challenge. And so what happened the next round was they actually, the corporation set it up as a contest among their, among their various teams. Uh, again, to, to incentivize them, to excite them, to, to show them the importance of the, of the event and of the work. Uh, again, you know, the, the, the real secret sauce in this though is 
the information we can provide to the corporations about the impact of what they've done. It's not just a one and done situation. Um, we want you to know that, that what you've done is meaningful, you know, both to World Vision, but also to the people we serve. Yeah, so it seems like it's very clear in team building that doing something together as one is important. So we can all go out and go bowling or take a hike in the hill behind the office together or go for drinks after dinner or after work. But when you get 5, 10, 20, 200 people together and they're doing something for people that are needy, I bet you have a lot of pride on your team to be able to create moments like that all over the country. Absolutely. It's what we it's what we live for. Is that I mean we're we're a relational bunch. You know, we we thrive on uh, it, in our world, we are the one team at World Vision that really is firmly planted in the secular world. And for us, the ability to work with a secular corporation, we don't know what the beliefs are. Um, we don't really know what the values are of the individuals, but we show up as kind of the, the hands, the feet, the face of Christ, showing those individuals Christ's love and what it will do throughout the world. And whether they're believers or not, they're impacted by it. They feel it. Yeah. And we see and we see a change. And we do see a change in the companies. We see a change in the employee force. Yeah. Um, many of those employees have gone, gone on to become donors of World Vision directly because of the impact that we've had on them. Yeah. Well, helping people is a universal language of love. And it doesn't have to be that somebody is a Christian. They could be of any particular faith. And I think we're allowing them to kind of, quote, bring their faith to work. Yep. and uh, help their fellow men and women who are needy. So let's go back to the warehouse. Yep. Uh, you have a number of warehouses all across uh, warehouses all across the country. And there's, in the case of product, excess product, it's stacked up to the ceiling in very huge warehouses. Um, but the way it's distributed is not always internationally, like we talked about putting on a on the water for 10 days and arriving in Africa or China or the Philippines or whatever. But I remember some vehicles from local churches that were lined up outside the door of your warehouses, ready to receive things that their um, church goers or their uh, people who were just needy and hanging around the church uh, needed something. Talk about that for a second, because that was pretty cool. Yeah, so we have a we have a division within our organization called U.S. Programs. Their role within World Vision is to work with the American Church and reignite the American Church. Our role in working with U.S. Programs is to provide the fuel that then they use to connect and provide much needed resources to to various churches. And again, much like our much like our work with donors, our work with churches involves all stripes, all denominations. Um, there are over 50 denominations represented in World Vision just as, as employees. We work with more than that in the field. So what we are is really the supply chain, the national supply chain for the American church movement as they improve and increase their ministry uh, within their communities. So again, we do, we're not engaged in direct service with those individuals. We work with those church partners who then provide those needed resources. And again, it takes all forms, you know, it's homeless, it's, you know, gospel missions, it's women's shelters, it's birthing clinics. Uh, you know, basically, if you can think of it, we're probably doing that work. Uh, First Nations work is a very, very important part of our work here in the United States. So uh, we have a, a large footprint on the Navajo Reservation. Um, we're working on Pine Ridge, Rosebud, uh, Wind River, uh, the Yakima Reservation, uh, providing those people with the resources. They're not market participants, so we provide resources that they otherwise could not obtain. Uh, on the Navajo Reservation, we're involved in rebuilding their homes. Um, the Bennett Freeze, if you want to look that up, you can look that up. It was a sad period in U.S. history from about 1965 until 2008, 
where the Navajo Nation was not allowed to uh, improve any of their infrastructure. So following 2008, we entered the reservation, we started providing the resources they needed everywhere, everything from Kohler toilets to uh, certainty shingles to gypsum sheetrock, uh, everything they need to build those homes. Mm -hmm. and, and again, having huge, huge impact domestically. Mm. I remember a video, uh, I don't know if you still have it up, but it was a video on your website that was uh, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And there was a particular person who had a very uh, 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 difficult environment in her home in Chicago. It had to do with a vanity and a sink that worked and, you know, toilet that didn't work and whatever. And all of a sudden she has a sink and a mirror. And if you think about it, you know, if your sink doesn't work and you can't see to fix your hair in the morning, it's not a great day. And you guys provided new things in, in this home, in this apartment, and the smiles were pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, and that video is still there. Um, the impact that we have on those individuals' lives, it, it's really hard to, it's hard to fathom. Uh, those of us who are market participants, you know, if we need a new toilet or new mirror or new clothing, you know, we just go to the store and we get what we need. Some of these people don't have that option. And we give them that alternative which then you know, helps start lifting them out of that situation that they're in. You know, one, of our, one of our catchphrases is we offer a hand up, not a hand out. So everything we do is about lifting people out of poverty, not necessarily making them reliant on us, but giving them the opportunity to lift themselves up so that they can become uh, market participants, they can have jobs, they can participate in society again. Um, so we're opening those doors for them is, is our belief. Yeah. When you return dignity to somebody, which is what you're doing, you give them value as a person and ultimately you give them hope for their future. And those are powerful uh, things to do. Dignity, uh, value as a person, hope for the future. And World Vision is doing that through corporate engagements. Very, very exciting. And imagine that there's somebody listening, I'm sure, that has that corner of their warehouse, they they make things, and they're sitting there with excess inventory, wondering, what should I do with it? Should I put it all in the trash can a little bit by little bit by little bit? Or maybe they have a lot. And imagine that yeah. that could be given to World Vision to help somebody and return dignity, value, and hope, and they end up with a tax receipt. So it's a great deal for everybody. So we're going to put the uh, World Vision logo in the lower thirds. It's worldvision.org backslash corporate. And just uh, remind our listeners again what somebody would do if they're interested. And also address the fact that somebody might think, I'm too small yeah. to participate. How can they ascertain? Are they big enough? Everybody's big enough. Um, we have very few uh, restrictions on what we what we can pick up. So uh, the primary restriction is uh, the, the volume, as you said. But if somebody has product that we need for our programming, we may not show up with a box truck to pick it up, but we can send them UPS or FedEx labels that direct the product to where it needs to go. So literally, you know, we work with over 400 corporations every year. It, it alter, you know, it rotates. Some years we work with some, other years we work with others. But those companies represent everything from a small startup, less than $500,000 in sales, as I said earlier, up to Fortune 5 companies like McKesson and Cardinal Health. Uh, we, we, are, we are not uh, concerned about the size of the corporation. We're concerned about the value of the of the product, the donation, and what we can do to help that corporation grow. Great. Well, Larry Noble, World Vision Corporate Engagement National Director, thank you so much. And I'm praying that there's going to be a lot of people who've never heard of you who will now be calling you up or clicking on worldvision.org backslash corporate and figuring out how you can help them.
Yep. Give us a call. There's uh, to use the marketing phrase. There's no obligation. Um, if there's no alignment, you know, we're still friends. We still pray together. Um, but we're looking for that alignment. We're work, looking for that win-win situation. If you can't create that, uh, then we'll just part as friends and and look for the next opportunity. There you go. And uh, perish the thought. There may be somebody listening who hasn't heard of Convene. So you can see in the lower thirds that it says convenenow.com. So check out convenenow.com. We're Christian CEOs and leaders helping each other to build better businesses, better families, profitable businesses, excellent businesses, all on a biblical platform. So check us out at convenenow.com and we will see you on the next podcast. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.